Good morning. My name is Tim Murr. I'm an elder at First Presbyterian Church, and I'm welcoming you to the online study of the book of James. This is the third week that we've been in James. The first week we heard from Elder Mike Barr. Then last week we heard from Elder Rex Kelly. And today we're going to be studying James 1, 22 through 27. But before I do that, I want to welcome you to this online study at First Presbyterian Church of Gulfport and invite you to our services, which are held every Sunday. The early morning service is at 9 a.m. and then the, there's Sunday school following that. And then at 1115, there is a service as well. So if you are in this area or if you're hearing me online, I would invite you to the services as well as Vacation Bible School that our church is sponsoring starting this coming Monday. And you can sign up for that for your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors online if you would. So this morning, we're going to be studying the book of James, verses, or chapter 1, verses 22 through 27. There are five chapters in the book of James. But James is filled with a practical guide to Christian living. It is a how-to guide for Christian living. Now, I must admit, I am entertained and also enlightened by the YouTube. And if you've ever gone on the YouTube and you want to figure out how to do something, there are great instructional videos, pretty short, free, online for you to look at on, on uh, YouTube. Do you want to know how to fix a leaky toilet? Do you want to know how to get rid of dollar weeds in your yard? Do you want to know how far to space caladiums in your garden when you plant them in the spring? Do you want to know how to cook a brisket on a big green egg? Well, those are all four searches that I have made in the last two months to learn how to do some of those things online on YouTube. It's a great, it's informative, and it's free. But conversely, there are more important things such as, do you want to know how to live the Christian life? Let me repeat that. Do you want to know how to read or how to live, not read, how to live the Christian life? Well, don't look at the YouTube. Don't go on the internet. Don't ask your neighbor. Read the book of James. Let me repeat that. If you want to know how to live the Christian life, read God's Word, read the book of James. Let's do that and let's open in prayer together. Father, I thank you for the book of James. I thank you for its practical application to our daily lives, to the teachings and the writings of James that impact our life on a daily basis, that give us a practical guide to show genuine faith in Jesus Christ. Enlighten our minds Help us to be not only hearers, but doers of the word. All these things we ask in your name. Amen. Okay, so this morning, as you recall, Elder Mike Barr taught us and gave us an outline of the book of James. He told us that the book of James was written by James, most likely the brother of Jesus, and it was written about 49 A.D., some 2,000 years ago, the book of James was written to a body of believers for them to learn how to walk the Christian faith, how to walk what Jesus taught them. And it is just as applicable today, 2021, June 6, 2021, as it was 2,000 years ago. Let me say that again. The book of James is just as applicable to the believers in 49 A.D. as it is to the believers in 2021. James is a call to action. It's a book for believers to be 
able to walk the talk, as we say. Not talk the talk, walk the talk. For believers to be involved in action. Last week, Elder Rex Kelly outlined four things which reflect what a mature Christian should look like. Now, I like list. I keep list on my phone. I keep uh, honeydew list around the house. I like lick list because I like to be able to check things off. And as we look at our spiritual lives, Brother Kelly talked about four things right from the book of James, chapter 1, verses 13 through 21. And I want to highlight this list not to you this week, but to me. Because when we stand up here and teach, I can tell you I'm teaching more to me than I am to you. And this is what Elder Kelly said last week, these four points. We, I, must be insightful as a mature Christian. That we, me, must be discerning. That we must be disciplined. And that we, I, must be proactive. Four things. Be insightful, discerning, disciplined, and proactive. So let's look and wade into James 1, verses 22 through 27. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. I like that version. Um, sometimes I use the NIV, but for today I like the New King James Version. And I want you to listen for a major theme in these, these uh, short section of five verses. This is James 1, 22 through 27. I'm going to, be reading, going to be reading from the New King James Version. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if any one, now remember, he's speaking to men and women here. He's speaking to believers. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Continuing in verse 26, If anyone among you who thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. There is a short section of five verses that outlines how we are to live. And what's that major theme that you saw in James? What was it? Well, let's find out. You know, one of the age-old questions that man asks is, I want to know. I want to know this or that. And in my own life, I've experienced that well. I want to know, is there life beyond earth? I want to know, can we safely land a man or woman on Mars and bring them back safely to earth? I want to know, are there UFOs? Well, you may have things you want to know as well. There's an old saying, inquiring minds want to know. Well, where did that phrase come from? Do you know where it came from? Well, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. Look it up. But if you're over 40 years of age, you'll probably know the answer. If you're under 40 you probably will have to Google it. But the, the old saying is, inquiring minds want to know. Well, here is a question that James asked for inquiring minds. How do I know that I have genuine faith? How do I know that I have genuine faith? 
Can you know the answer to this question? Is it an answer that we can find in the Word of God? Well, the answer to that is yes. You can know that you have genuine faith. The answer is, is found very clearly in 1 John 5, 13. Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 John 5, 13. And again, I'm reading from the New King James Version. These things are written, or these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. These things are written so that you may know. The book of James is written so that you may know how to have genuine faith. It says right here in 1 John 5.13, if you read the word of God, you will know. Not may know, not probably may know, it's very clearly, I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. You may know that you have genuine faith. Well, James talks about genuine faith. If you remember last week and the week before, we talked about trials. I believe Mike Barr talked about that in, in uh, James 1 through 18 that genuine faith stands up under trials and pressure. Genuine faith stands up under trial and pressure. Today we're going to be seeing in, in uh, James 1, 22 through 27, that genuine faith motivates and inspires me to go where Scripture leads me. Let me say that again. The genuine faith motivates and inspires me to go where Scripture leads me. Let's read verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. But be doers of the word. James is giving us a call to action. Let me put it very clearly what James is saying. Get off your rear ends and put your theology and your faith and belief to work. Get off your rear end and get into high gear. That's what he's saying in the vernacular of the world. And let me be very pointed here. Our leadership team at First Presbyterian Church of Gulfport continually talks about the collateral spiritual damage of the, of the pandemic that we are just coming out of. We talk about spiritual collateral damage of the body of believers because of COVID. And let me tell you what we talk about continually. We talk about the isolation of the body of believers. We talk about the inability to have fellowship with the body of believers. We talk another spiritual collateral damage is the inability to have corporate worship and the inactivity of the body of believers. Four things, isolation, inability to have fellowship, inability to have corporate worship, and the inactivity of the body of believers. We've experienced that here. I've experienced it. We suffer from being together because of the effects of COVID-19 of being together as a body. Now, I know I'm going to step on some toes right here. I'm probably going to say things that are maybe you don't want to hear. And one of the beauty of being able to listen to me on the internet is you can turn me off. Well, I guess you want to hear what else I'm going to say because you just turned me back on. I'm going to tell you some things that are on my heart. Where are our volunteers in ministry? Here we are on June the 6th. We're on the backside of the COVID. Now, I know COVID-19 is real. 
I am not downplaying it in any way, fashion, or form. But we're on the backside of flattening the curve of COVID-19. Many of us have had our vaccinations. We're filling up and seeing more and more people come to corporate worship. But where are our volunteers in ministry? Where are the teachers to teach our children? Why are we scrambling to get volunteers for Vacation Bible School starting on Monday? Today's Sunday. Where are our volunteers? We've never had to scramble for volunteers for Vacation Bible School. And why aren't more of our members coming back to corporate worship? And why aren't all these chairs that I see before me full? Where's our choir? In other words, what I'm saying, believers, is be doers at the time of sitting back and waiting because of the COVID is over. And I know there is a balance to be reached in dealing with this unprecedented health crisis. COVID was real. But it's become way, way, way too easy to sit back and watch church services online, to watch Wednesday night online, to watch Sunday school online. And we've done that from March 2020 to the present. But James says, be a doer and put your faith into action. And at First Presbyterian Church in Gulfport, we need more doers. We need more people to step up and be part of the doers, not just hearers. Now James gives us a word picture in verse 23 through 24. He says, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. I get up every morning and I shave and I brush my teeth and I comb my hair or whatever is left of it because I want to look good. I want to be presentable. But if I don't look in the mirror, I'll miss something. So I look in the mirror, I observe what I look like. And that's exactly what James is saying here. If you're just a hearer of the word, you're like the person that looks in the mirror and then walks away and forgets what he or she looks like. And James is calling us to action. He talks about, in verse 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it. What is that? What does he mean? Is he talking about the Ten Commandments, the law? No. No, he's not talking about the law in Ten Commandments. He's talking about living out the Word. He's talking about living out your faith in Christ, in Christ, living out your faith in Christ. Be a doer. It's a sign of genuine faith. Healing, or excuse me, hearing the Word of God leads to godly action. Let me repeat that. Hearing the Word of God leads to godly action. James is saying in this word picture, if you don't, know, if you don't care what you look like, don't look in the mirror. Well, when you hear the Word of God, it motivates you to do, to be a doer. And James now moves from one admonition to another and talks in verse 26, and he gets very personal. In verse 26, if anyone, in fact, he could write my name in this, if anyone who thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. I'm going to confess to you today, I have problems with my tongue. I have problems bridling my speech. Things get out of my mouth before my brain thinks about it. I've been impulsive all my life. I have to bridle my tongue. I know what a bridle is. I've been around horses. It's a bit in your mouth that prevents you or a horse to be able to control it. It's a good word, a good word picture there. So James says, if you want to know what genuine faith is, 
then you need to watch how you control or watch how you use your tongue. What is your manner of speech? And he gets very personal. What's the manner of speech to your spouse, your children, your co-workers and your neighbors, your fellow believers, the general public? How about this one, social media? How you speak or how you communicate is a showing of genuine faith. He says, if anyone among you thinks he is religious, but does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, his religion is useless. It's good for nothing. Now, this statement is very harsh. This statement is very definitive. There's no wiggle room here. James said, if you don't bridle your tongue or watch how you speak to others, your religion is useless. Why? Why? Because the old saying, if sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, is a lie. We learned it as children. But I'm telling you, as an adult, it is a lie straight from the pit of hell. Sticks and stones may break your bones and words will hurt you even more. Let's talk and let's keep going here in verse 27. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. James again is pointing out a very practical application. He's talking about this. He says, visit orphans and the widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. There are two things that we talk about that are close to God's heart. They show his character, and that is caring for and showing love to those who don't have the support of family, to widows who have lost their husband or lost their spouse, husband or wife, widows or widowers, and those that are orphans that have lost their parents and to visit those in their trouble because in the old, in the, in the time where James was speaking, if you lost your spouse, if you lost your parents, you were effectively homeless. And the second is to keep oneself unspotted, keep oneself unspotted from the world to be separate and apart. Well, what is James saying? He's saying, be holy. Remember, 1 Peter 1.16 says, Be ye holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Be holy. Why? Because they reflect the concerns and the character of God the Father. They reflect His character. Now, I know I've been very pointed today. Maybe I haven't bridled my tongue but let me summarize what the lesson is about today and, and phrase it with this question. Why do we devote our time to the teaching, preaching, and application of the Word of God? Why do we devote our time to the teaching, preaching, and application of the Word of God? Why do we do that? Well, the answer is very clear in Scripture. It's very clear in Ephesians 4, 12. Turn with me and read it. Turn with me and read Ephesians 4, 12. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Here's the answer to why do we do this. Verse 12, it is for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Why, why do we do this? What's the answer? To equip the saints. Who are the saints? It's not the football team. It's us. It's the believers. It's you and me. And why are we being equipped? Go to the next phrase. For the work of ministry. Ministry is work. Volunteering to teach Sunday school is work. Helping out in VPS, VBS is work, but it's the work of ministry. It's the work of ministry 
for the edifying of the body of Christ. So why do we devote our time and our applications for teaching and preaching application? To equip the saints. And the second thing is to build up, edify the body of Christ. Building up requires doers. We need doers. The body of believers, the body of believers need to be doers. And what's the result? What is the result? Well, here's the result. We become mature Christians. We become more like Christ. Christ wasn't just about teaching the, the uh, disciples and the believers in, in Galilee. He was out among the people. He was doing. He was healing. He was driving out demons. The epitome of a doer. And that's what the call to action is in James. If you want to know if you have genuine faith, be a doer of the word, not just a hearer of the word. So my admonition to you today, or James's admonition to you today, is be a doer. Let's do it. Pray with me. Father, I thank you for James's word. It's applicable to my life. It's applicable to those that hear me. And even though it was written in 49 AD, it's applicable to where we are today on June 6, 2021. Let us not walk away from this section in Scripture just hearing it. Let us apply it to our lives and be doers. In Jesus' name, amen.